Hey everybody, this is uh, Jim at FreeChartVideos.com. It is 4.30 p.m. on March 15th, 2011. And uh, again, this is being brought to you by FreeChartVideos.com. Using time under techniques to understand modern markets. Uh, the disclaimer goes thus. This video is for educational purposes only and is not intended to be any form of investment advice. I can draw lines on charts, but you have to draw your own conclusions from your own due diligence and make investment decisions that are suitable for your financial situation. I am not a licensed professional. I'm just a guy that draws lines on charts, so let's look at the S&P. Okay, we are looking at an hourly chart where each candle is one hour of trading. I have removed some lines uh, from this chart to make it a little bit of an easier read because it was getting a little cluttered with all kinds of theoretical lines that didn't pan out. And that's the way charting works, I think. Um, look, here is the reversal triangle that uh, that we were talking about as this developed. And, and you remember, I was, I was undecided whether or not this was going to break up or break down. And, uh, and, and that is the case. I mean, you don't know. You just see it develop and you say, okay, uh, which way is it going to go? There were a couple things that said it could go up. There were a couple things that said it could go down. It went down. And uh, what we do is, you see the breakdown. There was a pullback. Then there was another uh, downwards move. It looked like it wanted to recover. Then it really got slammed today on tremendous weakness in the Nikkei. And I'll be honest with you guys, I'm going to uh, not really politicize here, but I'm going to give my opinion. And I think I'm going to write a piece on this, too, on, on my website in the opinion section. I think the markets are down on technical weakness. The headlines are all reading that markets are down on, on uh, uh, concerns over Japanese economy. People, uh, look, what happened in Japan exacted a terrible human toll and a terrible economic toll in much the same way that World War II exacted a terrible economic demand upon the United States. But guys, that was the end of the Depression. That, that put the Depression to rest. So what am I saying? That what's going on in Japan, and I'm not making light of it, please don't, don't read me wrong, but what's happening in Japan on an economic basis will do more to spur growth than you could imagine. Because there are needs now, there are demands that are being placed upon productivity that must be met. And part of that demand will likely um, come from the United States. As a matter of fact, you know, Japan has, has always been, uh, in recent years... Um, a, a weak importer and a strong exporter of goods. And I believe that with, with what has happened with this disaster, that uh, at least temporarily, Japan will export less and import more. So the market's selling off today uh, at, at one point down, what, uh, two, more than 2%. Two, two and a what? I don't know. I, w I was at uh, at Schwab, uh, getting some stuff straight with uh, accounts and getting them, getting beneficiaries changed to a, a living trust. But anyway, that aside, the markets are not rational, and I think what happened today uh, was based more upon technical things and less upon reality, because. The, again, don't misunderstand me. I'm not taking away from the tragedy uh, of the earthquake, tsunami, and the, the, and the uh, uh, issues with the nuclear uh, reactors. But what I am saying is, if you step back from that and, and you allow yourself to be a little bit uh, coldly analytical, you will come away with the, with the idea that this will be a net plus for the U.S. economy. We got to help them and we have raw materials, we have building materials uh, and, uh, and I suspect that the, that the demand that will be uh, 
in place in Japan for rebuilding will outrun uh, their ability to produce uh, all of the materials and things needed. I may be wrong on that. I don't really. I'm not an expert of the Japanese economy, but I know that uh, that this is going to create a tremendous uh, amount of pressure for uh, for for the goods necessary for the rebuilding process. So all of this stuff today really, I think, was more technical. It was more markets looking for an excuse than it was somebody sitting down and saying, now, what does this really mean for the bottom line of the U.S. economy? Uh, I, I, think they're, I think that markets just totally got this wrong. But what do I know? I'm not an economist either. Uh, I'm, not a, I'm not licensed at that. That's another thing I have no license for. But anyway, looking at the chart, you can see that uh, we had this triangle that broke down. And you know, you know the, uh, the, the drill, I hope, by now. And that is you measure the uh, expected move out of that triangle, the minimum expected move, by measuring the height at the first reaction, which would be right here, and then adding that on to the point of the, of the uh, breakout or breakdown, and look at that. Now, does that mean that is the end of this move? Uh, no, it doesn't. Does that mean it could be the end of this move? Yes, it does. Uh, if if uh, I had measured this triangle and it went down here, instead of here, and, and I said, is this the end of the move? I would say, no, it's not. Could it be the end of the move? No, no. If we trust the chart, if we trust this pattern, and this is how far it says it goes, that's how far I will say it's going to go. However, that's not how far it says... It gives us this measurement. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. All this means is we have now met the minimum. Just like 1340 was the minimum for the inverse head and shoulders that uh, completed and broke out uh, about, tw uh, what, 20 months ago. That was met. So do we expect more? Maybe. Do we say that, uh, do we definitely expect no more? No. We'll be prepared for more, but if it doesn't come, it doesn't come. And you can see how incredibly, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You can see how it got to that point, and just right when it got there, it said, can't go on any further. We're so close to the summit. Oh, we reached the top. And then it's, everybody has to, everybody has to now uh, get off the mountain quickly. So anyway, he, here's the deal. We've met the minimum. Let's look at uh, it a little bit uh, closer in at this uh, action and see if we can uh, pick up anything that might lead us to some expectations for the rest of this week. Okay, yesterday um, I had identified what I thought looked like a, a potential descending kind of a wedge pattern, which, which really makes sense when you think about uh, what the markets are in need of right now. Uh, descending wedges are, are, uh, are uh, periods in which the markets sell off, but they usually do so in a in, in somewhat controlled manner, and the sell-off loses intensity as it moves down. There, therefore, the action begins to get less and less uh, from valley to peak as, as things just calm down. As the, as the really motivated sellers start to uh, be weeded out of the market. But conversely, you don't have the real motivated buyers yet to, uh, to really jack things up and run prices back up again. So here's, here's what I'm, I'm kind of seeing here. We had this line of resistance, and it really looked like we were going to head up here and tag this. But uh, I just think... The, the news with the Nikkei being down, what, 12% at the open, the U.S. markets just, you know, even though it was kind of in this pattern, that was, that was the kind of uh, motivation that I think stepped up selling pressure, and we got what we got uh, this morning, which was just a very strong uh, uh, gap down at the open. Now, you can look at this and say, well, what, what happened today with the, with the late-day 
call it relative strength because we still close down over a percent. Well, some people might say, well, all that was we were just closing the gap and now we're going to trade back down. That's certainly a possibility. But I will remind you that we had this line that had one, two, three, four, five solid tests of support that gave way at the open. And all day long, the markets struggled, apparently, to reposition inside of this pattern. And that looks like that's ha what's happened. Additionally, the sell-off later in the day from probably the day traders that jumped on the big gap down, looking for the gap, looking to fill the gap. I don't believe in that necessarily, but enough people do to where I guess it's a maybe at times a self-fulfilling prophecy. But uh, that selling still stayed within this pattern. So let's see. This is this is just my my idea here. Let's see if if this pattern now uh, stays intact. Now that we've uh, taken care of a lot of the selling. Now you'll remember that I've mentioned that there are times when you can take the uh, lines of a, a descending or an ascending wedge and you see where those lines uh, uh, meet that would be the apex well I guess apex would be if it goes up but that would that would be the uh, the intersection of these converging lines and how often it is that that points to an area uh, that that will provide technical strength or uh, either support or resistance depending upon which way the pattern is going and I've done that with this and we end up with uh, just a little under 1260 uh, uh, that doesn't mean that's necessarily where things are going and this is very preliminary uh, I just am putting this here in advance to see if this works out because we closed over 1272 we we made uh, uh, and, and actually, I, I, when I redrew this uh, this pattern, now that we've seen it in its entirety, I decided to measure this as a symmetrical triangle instead of a flat top triangle. Um, the flat top triangle uh, actually measured to 1272, and um, but I since we got down here, I thought, well, maybe that really is the true pattern. So I kind of altered that this top line. I'll show you what I did r very briefly. I went ahead and, inclu and included this this top peak right here, even though we had one, two uh, of identical height. For a while, I was thinking maybe this is what we were looking at, but uh, I think it's kind of probably kind of a combination of both. Because keep in mind, we're dealing with an index here; we're not dealing with an individual stock. So there are probably some sectors that were making a flat triangle. Other sectors were making a, uh, a regular symmetrical triangle. You kind of get the picture. So you just, you know, you, you have to kind of go with it as it presents itself. And um, in order to understand future action, uh, if something looks like it maybe wasn't just right when we were initially drawing those lines, I'll go back and make that alteration. I, I, I'm not proud. If I was wrong, I was wrong. But anyway, I'm looking at this, and it says, um, if it's right, and again, at this point, this is sort of conjecture. It says we probably shouldn't get lower than that line. Now, what does this mean? Well, it means that if we can go sideways, stay in this pattern, break out, then maybe back test down here again uh, at some point in a week or so, uh, that might be... Uh, the correction that the market needed. It, it maybe just needed a breather rather than a serious haircut. If, however, this line does give way, or maybe this pattern does not play out, and we immediately start with more weakness tomorrow, um, then, you know, we're, we're looking at, uh, at about 1223, or this green line, uh, which is drawn under the last two major bottoms, uh, as being something that should catch us at least temporarily. So we've got levels of support underneath us and we don't have a tremendous amount of resistance uh, overhead but uh, this 1312, 1313 area that will probably put up a fight 
uh, or wherever we might meet this extended line underneath this pattern. So anyway, that's what's going on with the S&P. Um, I hope you played it right today, uh, and we're, we're not uh, 100% long going into this. Hopefully not. Um, I had a few select stocks that I'm long, and I'll tell you what, what uh, two of them are. Uh, I'm long Ford right now, F, and uh, I'm also long Sprint. So, uh, and, and I've got a few other things, too. I picked up some Brown Shoe Company real cheap uh, this morning. Uh, they, uh, they had a good report, good numbers, good outlook, good guidance, and it got slammed for a 20% loss with the weakness that we had, but it got taken right down to support. So maybe take a look at BWS for yourself. Uh, look, when you get a chance, please stop by freechartvideos.com and uh, help me pay the bills with your traffic. And, uh, and if you uh, want to make a donation, uh, there's a spot where you can do that. Uh, look, I'm, I do this every day, uh, not because I'm getting rich at it. I'm, I'm not really getting rich at it at all. But I, I'm doing it because I, th I think it's interesting, and I think I've got something of a knack for it. So, look, take care, and uh, let's see what the markets serve up tomorrow.